was in a band called uh, Ex Mortis. Okay, that's mm-hmm. really where it all started for me um, back in uh, 1986 through 89. Um, and then, you know, that progressed and we had put out two demos, uh, Immortality's End and Descent into Chaos. And uh, we tape traded with Immolation, Morbid Angel, Malevolent Creation, um, you know, Autopsy, things like that. Um, so that's where I started. And then, you know, over the years, you know, the band, uh, you know, it, it, we put out two demos and then the band broke up. So um, I tried to do Diabolic, um, but uh, so I moved to Florida. I tried to do Diabolic down here earlier back in like 1991, um, but that didn't work out. So uh, uh, Pete and Richard got back, you know, Pete and Richard from Morbid Angel, they got back from, uh, I think there was like, you know, they're on tour for, I think, Blessed Are the Sick or something. And um, they came back with this demo. Uh, it was had a drum machine and it was Gene Holbicki from Angel Corpse, you know. Um, so he had this demo and then I went ahead and, uh, linked up with him. He moved down to Florida and then we wound up moving back up to Minnesota to record the, the demo. So the impiety despondent ecstasy's demo, um, that's right now you can still, you can get that. I mean, that's on, um, you can, you can find that demo, I think on Bandcamp, right. And hell's headbangers, uh, they're, they're pushing it. They have that's on vinyl and things like that. That's on also they're selling the tape. Okay. So. Um, then, I mean, you know, time went by, I moved back to, to Maryland, you know, Minnesota's really fucking cold and, uh, hooked up with this, uh, this band, you know, they're, these guys, they were ex, they were the new ex mortis, um, you know, and I'd moved out of town, you know, I'd, I'd come back to town. I was like a totally different ex mortis. I was like, well, I thought our band broke up, but the bass player pulled, pulled these guys together, you know, Chris Weiser, uh, he pulled together Chuka and Giles and some guys that we just knew. And so I'm like, okay, I'm back in town. What's going on? I show up and I'm, I'm listening to what they're doing. And I'm like, well, that's cool, but it didn't work out. I mean, something happened. And I think after I, I moved into the band house for like about a month, um, they wound up, um, you know, just, they didn't get along and they just wanted to break up the band X Mortis. Right. So I'm like, okay, that's not the real X Mortis anyway, really. But you know i was like i was down i was like whatever you guys want to do so the guitar player chuka said hey you know what let's get a band house and so i was like yeah let's get a band house because well what do you want to name the band he goes well we'll just name it horror of horrors so i was like okay whatever you know i was like i wasn't really in a you know in a state i was just like you know let's let's do something you know i want to jam do something new and so we put out a couple albums um sounds of eerie and we put out this other the second record fangs breaking the skin and we played a lot of show we opened up for uh uh you know uh, cannibal corpse and uh did a bunch of local shows we played the milwaukee metal fest and things like that um and then that band sort of the kind of like teeter out you know what i mean it was just like we put out something it's just we weren't getting tours or anything and so it just seemed like to me where it was just kind of like i was like i was in the middle of a snowstorm and I've been wanting to, I've been missing Florida. And I was like, man, you know, once you get that taste of Florida death metal and, you know, I knew people down here already. It was just like, man, you know, I really miss Florida. And Kelly came by. Okay. So Kelly McLaughlin, he's in pessimist. And he's like, yeah, man. Um, you know, I said, I call Kelly. I said, Kelly, come over and play some leads over these songs. It's keyboards and drums. And it's, um, you know, just I had keyboards and drums doing blast beats and things like that. So he took over the spot in Horror of Horrors. I mean, I think it was our last show that Kelly was, you know, he came because his leads were just fucking were, were incredible. And I was just like, I really want to work with him. And um, so, but Kelly was just like, look, I'm not moving the floor. I got pessimists. This is what I'm going to do. And I said, that's totally cool. I said, I'm going to move to Florida. But, you know, I, I don't I don't have anything to lose here in Maryland anymore. Um you know, so uh, I called uh, Lee Harrison when I got down here and he said, I, I've got some people down here. Um, you know, uh, I've got uh, he had three different groups of people that were looking for drummers. And um, that's when I linked up with uh, Brian Malone, Rut Cole and Paul Olette. And they were the most ready guys. I mean, they had this big, huge inverted crossover over the over the fireplace the whole part the whole house was um 
it was it was in it was all black carpet black and red carpet all from on the walls on the on the on the ceiling everywhere i mean it just it was a really dark e evil place and i was like wow man this is you know and i heard what they were doing but the songs were just a little bit too long i mean you know what i mean they were just like 15 minute long songs like 10 minute long songs i was you know i'm, I'm more rain and blood kind of guy i'm just like you can put 10 songs in 30 minutes OK, if you want to be efficient and that really helps on tour because you don't always get that much time to play on tour. So if you can pull off five, six songs and, you know, or, or more in, in a 30 minute set, you're going to get to play and people get to see more of you than playing, you know, just do the math. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, we wound up putting out the City of the Dead demo and um, we went over, uh, you know, Lee Harrison, um, you know, he was. Uh, he, Rob, Rob from Cannibal was living at Lee's house. So Rob, Rob had the studio, the little, the eight track studio. And so, and we're at Lee's house. So we had, you know, we could, we could record over and over and over again until the drums and everything were right. And so um, I was like, all right, well, um, you know, we got the equipment that we needed. We had the, we had the friends around us that we needed. We had Jason Morgan. I mean, he played guitar on the monstrosity albums. Um, you know, way back then. And he was incredible to for our guitar players to hang out with them. This as musicians to we were just in the right. You know, we just had the perfect energy for the City of the Dead. Demo. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it was a while after that before Kelly actually actually did come to Florida. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, beginning that demo that I did with Kelly, um, you'll be able to hear that. Um you know, probably within the next year, whenever Vic Records wants to put it out. I mean, I've already given them the rights. Yeah. License. Yeah, they've already sent over a contract. So, um, but that's that, that, that's how City of the Dead started. City of the Dead, we we pressed it ourselves. We did uh, a short East Coast tour uh, up and down the East Coast. Um, and, you know, there wasn't anybody at the shows. You know, we didn't, we were just signed. A, uh, we weren't even signing a record deal. We were just... We had an RV, we purchased an RV and we just started, you know, you know, tape trading with bands. This is before the internet, you know, 97, you know what I mean? You're just, we're just tape trading with um, uh, up, bands up and down the East Coast and, uh, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, just trying to get out of Florida and do stuff. And another band that we wound up uh, uh, tape trading with was Infamy uh, from Los Angeles, California. Okay. And their demo and our demo came out at the same time. We loved their demo. And so we just, uh, they booked like five shows in California. Um, so flying to California for us, this was like, we'd never been to California. So it was a big fucking deal, man. I mean, and we, you know, we, 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 we bought our plane tickets. We flew out to California um, and they set up a show at, at a backyard uh, party they showed up a show at Al's Bar downtown uh, Los Angeles, California. They showed up a show at the Whiskey, a go-go with us. And, they, and we were open up for, uh, for six feet under. Mm -hmm. So they gave us the show to play at the Whiskey. And then they, they took the show in Corona, um, you know, because six feet, they had a, you know, they, they hooked that, 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 sh that show up. And then we also played up in San Francisco um, and at another bar it was badass so that's how i mean we got the demo out there i mean the, the main thing we wanted to do is get to new york texas and los Angeles, california you know what i mean and this is before you know so we played i think we played the milwaukee metal fest and then lee harrison approached us you know with the contract uh to do the supreme evil album um and then we i think it was like a 1500 dollars recording budget to record supreme evil and I think I got, I called Joe Patagno um, and Gene, Gene gave me Joe Patagno's, you know, his information because he had had it for the first Angel Corpse album. You know, he, Joe Patagno did that. And Lee Harrison wanted us to have a really good, um, a good artist. You know what I mean? Like I had like some underground, I had like the exorcist, that part in the exorcist where the steeple comes through the priest and I paused it and I tried to cut it out. You know what I mean? And try to put that for the record co cover. And Lee wasn't having it. He was like, no, dude, we got to get you an artist. And so I called, reached out to Joe Patagno. He, uh, the Supreme Evil album cover was like 
four hundred bucks or three hundred bucks or something. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that's crazy. Now it's like okay. five grand. I mean, it's you know, it's Joe Patagno. I mean, you can see why. I mean, one of his shirts is sold. You know, he's sold millions of uh, motorhead. You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, but he was really, really. That was really cool. And then we put that album out, and then we had a two album deal with uh, with Lee uh, for Supreme Evil, and then Subterranean Magnitude. So yeah. that's how it started. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, yeah, Subterranean Magnitude. That's when I came in to I. I, I discovered you guys i guess you know and got into it it's good um that one's produced by uh juan punchy gonzalez right how, and you've worked with him a lot since how did you first get together with him so i was uh i would go over to trey's house and ride bmx you know he was uh, i knew him from back in 91 when i lived here before so nine you know you you know i just 90 seven you know 1996 97 when you know when we were we were all hanging out um i'd go over and uh play video games with trey you know what i mean and you know hang out, hanging out with trey and pete and so i said w w you know what are we gonna you know so it's like i was asking him about sound man or, or something like that. i was like we need a sound guy you know he goes yeah we'll call our guy call our guy punchy and so he helped us uh he flew up to new york and played our you know we had a show at a big ass fucking festival of mayhem and fucking all these killer fucking bands and shit and um uh so we flew him up we'd fly him up to new york you know or any show that we had out that we could get him to we made sure we brought punchy with us uh because without a good sound you're done you can't nobody's gonna hear the guitars right they're not gonna hear the drums right they're not, they're not gonna hear the vocals right if you just you know hope the best for the the sound guy that's there that night mm -hmm. so we always you know that's how we started working with him and then um he uh he came into play at greenhouse recording where we recorded subterranean magnitude so um the guy that recorded that owned the studio wes he was a piano player so you remember the piano play in the beginning of the album yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so he he's the guy that actually did that the owner of that studio he had pro tools on. i mean he had that and um but punchy knew what kind of music we were playing you know what i mean mm -hmm. so he understood because he was already on tour morbid domination and all that shit you know what i mean he was doing covenant tour with those guys so he knew how to put how to record fast music or how to capture it you know properly so we went to punchy uh, for subterranean magnitude and um with you know both wes and punchy they worked together and we just went in live and recorded the songs live i mean we all were in one room so one two three four go you know um each song once the drums were done they went over and i think they kept some of the scratch track guitars and put leads over it our budget wasn't any more than it was before. It didn't increase or anything. So mm -hmm. I think we did that for another 1500 bucks. Mm -hmm. That album, that, I mean, but it's, I mean, the production for that time, I'm really happy with the way it's yeah. came. 2002, you guys go to European tour, yeah? Like playing with Behemoth and Destroy 666 and that. Um, how was that playing, you know, overseas the, with, uh, with Diabolic the first time? I mean, those guys are fun to fucking tour, man. And I mean, I mean, I mean, with Behemoth, you know, you really got to be careful, man, because they drink vodka. They were drinking vodka. And it's like, man, you, you got to be able to pace yourself when you're on tour with those guys, man. They're from Poland, bro. I mean, they've got, they know they can drink you under the fucking table if they want to. You know what I mean? So, I mean, uh, so it was a lot of fun uh, touring with those guys. And Deicide was on that tour too for like mm. four days. I knew Deicide. They used to come over to my house um, here in Tampa. Um, and uh, so it was like, you know, it was really cool to have, you know, DSI for those four shows. I think they play London, Germany, um, you know, and a couple other places I can't remember. But um, and then they were off the tour. They were on the first beginning part of the tour. But we still had we still play with Behemoth and Sentinex. I think it was yeah, cool. uh, Destroyer 666, of course. I mean, Destroyer 666 for bad as fuck. So it was a real it was a cool it was, you know everybody you know got along um bobby uh he did the tour for us uh bobby he's in possessed right 
Robert Cardenas, right? Now he's in possessed. He plays bass, but he played, you know, I called him up because I saw him and his other band, uh, Coffin Text. And I said, man, you would fucking kill and diabolic, man. I've seen you play bass and do vocals. You got the perfect fucking energy. You look like fucking Tom Murray a little bit. Fucking, you got that, you know, you're, you know, he's a badass dude. And so, and so he came, he flew here and stayed here for about a month. And he, we got him, you know, he got ready for, to tour Europe with us. And, um, we did that one tour and then, um, I got back from, we got back from the tour, but oh, hold on, let me finish this. It's like, as far as being on that tour was awesome because we got to yeah. play some more incredible places. Huh. That's cool. But, um, yeah. So what, what were you going to say? You were saying when you got back from tour? Right. Yeah. So I got back from tour and uh, it was just like uh, I got a, a, a red on blabber mouth that I got kicked out of the band. Mm. And, um, you know, I go to call Brian and I'm like, you know, well, uh, what's going on? And he goes, well, you know, you weren't really playing your best on those shows. And I was like, well, um, OK. And then he goes, well, we, are, we got somebody else from France. And then they had that guy come in um, and do the uh, Infinity through Purification album, okay. right? So, I mean, for me, I mean, it was just like, it was pretty fucking, I was like, man, all that work, you know, I fucking, you know, I came up with the band name. We came, we wrote these songs together, you know, I, I picked up the guitar and wrote a lot of riffs and on you know, Supreme Evil and Subterranean Magnitude. So it wasn't just like I was a drummer in the band, you know? Um, you know, when you actually play music and write music in the band, that means you're part of the band, you know what I mean? That's a part of your spirit going under, not just, to, you know, not just knocking the drums, but I mean, it's just like, you know, it, it just, it just, you know, it just hit home. So I was like, fuck, I got home and then that was, that was that. Yeah. So then like, there's a di diabolic sort of wraps up for a while and then 2006, it's, you guys reform, right? Like how did that sort of come about the whole coming back together and start you, you being back in there and that sort of thing. So what I did was, um, I, I just, I contact the record label and I'm like, you know, there's nothing you can do. Just, um, why don't you start a new band? Why don't you start? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh yeah, sure. I'll just, okay. And I thought about it and I said, all right, so I'm gonna. I've got an idea. I'm gonna start this new band. It's gonna be called Unholy Ghost. Oh, yeah, and you know, I had that name just in case because Diabolic was kind of a one of those kind of names where you just never know if somebody already had it. Sure. And then when we got it, it was like, oh, it's cool. You know, I was like, all right, cool, we can run with it. But then I was like, man, um, I was pretty much a dead end. But I was like, all right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna um. I'm going to, you know, we're going to put out a demo. He goes, well, we want you to put out a demo. I called Marco over at Century Media. He goes, I want you to put out a demo and I want you to start playing some shows, man. Show me what you got. You know, don't, don't, don't start, don't, you know, don't, don't complain. Don't, you know, just uh, let's see what you got, man. Cause you're a great drummer and you know, you get, you, you guys, you, you guys, you can pull this together. So I'm like, okay. So we put out a demo um which is going to be released on vic records uh next year um and it was like a three song demo and uh we played um snake pit metal fest and uh we played a few few festivals and um i got back in touch with marco and he liked the demo you know huh. Huh. Uh, i got back in touch with central media and they said um you know let's hear the rest of it you know so we did a dry runs of the rest of the songs but we recorded enough of you know a demo that they were interested in. so they just gave us a budget and we just set up the time with uh punchy and just went in and recorded the unholy ghost um torrential rain album cool. so i had you know i, I still had paul because he you know paul was still you know he they didn't want him for the new diabolic still had a Jerry that, you know, Jerry, he was, you know, he helped. Uh, and then of course, um, Jerry Morlero and then Kelly, 
So I called Kelly. I'm like, man, you know, I'm doing this new thing now. What do you think? And he's like, you know, I talked to his wife first. I was like, you know, is it okay to even talk to Kelly about jamming, you know? And she's just like, yeah, I think it'd be a great idea. And so he moved down to Florida like a month, like a month later. Hmm. And then we did on Holy Ghost. Um, and so something with something just didn't go right in Holy Ghost. I mean, we were doing shows and it was just it was just something that just didn't did just didn't we were I don't know what it was. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, we weren't getting along. There was just like something happened. We, you know, we weren't getting along or something. And um, I just, you know, felt like, hey, you know, um, you know, one day I look on Blabbermouth and they're like, oh, well, you're kicked out of Unholy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, OK. So we got another drummer. We don't we don't we don't want you. I'm like, wow. OK um sitting there you know i'm like i just started this band and this is happening again dude you know <laughs> and so i was like all right this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna do this album called i'm gonna i, I found these guys you know uh, rj and jesse jolly right they're at the brass mug down the road and they're like yeah man um you know i was like hey man you're a fucking good guitar player and these you know these guys are young you know i'm like yeah dude let's jam sometime you know never know let's just jam and uh, Jesse Jolly came over and we just started writing these songs, me and RJ. And uh, so, and we got Jeff Parrish in on it. And so we released an album called Blastmasters Twisted Metal. Yeah. And it was totally different than, you know, the unholy evil, you know, uh, you know, band titles that I have before. You know what I mean? Diabolic mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Unholy Ghost. I was like, let's try something a little different. You know what I mean? And because Jesse has these different lyrics anyways. I mean, if you look at some of the album, the song titles on the Blastmasters album, um, it was just a totally different perspective on writing, you know, um, and, and with a with a super high uh, quality level about, um, you know, what he's writing about. He's it's like really intelligent lyrics. And um, so the Blastmasters Twisted Metal album, we released it. And we self-released it. We pressed the CDs, you know what I mean? We just played, we played Los Angeles and we played, you know, Texas. And so I was trying to get everything, you know, slowly back together. Um, and then I get home, I get, you know, I, I'm home one day and uh, I, I think I went to a show and then Lee Harrison said, what's up with Diabolic? And I said, um, what do you mean? He goes, well, they're not, he goes, take, that's your, that's your band, take your band back, you know, and I'm like, what do you mean, I'm like, I thought about it, and it goes, I looked in the news, and it said that Brian Malone had put a message out to the press that he's no longer going to do Diabolic, and that was that, and I'm like, well, that, to me, showed that, you know, to lead, you know, telling me, like, hey, man, he just abandoned the name, basically, you know what I mean, and I was like, yeah, I guess you're right, you know, I guess, I guess you're right, man. I mean, you know, and it's, if he wants to fight with me about it, it's going to cost, that's going to cost a lot of attorney money, wasted attorney money. You know what I mean? To even think about it. So, um, I said, I said, fuck it, dude. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into the studio and I'm going to record this demo and it's going to be called chaos and hell. So, I mean, you know, the Blastmasters thing, um, we played a few shows together, but, but that sort of you know that that evolved but so much you know what i mean just the guys just you know decided hey they wanted to do other things we just grew apart you know what i mean things just weren't like you know it was just an it was a natural evolution like we did it the album's done everything's cool and then i was like you know talking to lee's like well dude you know don't let that name go you you know um and um so we did chaos and hell ep and at that time i just sent that over to uh deathgasm records um and deathgasm records picked up the blastmasters album and then they picked up the chaos and hell album because i put i made that with the the chaos and hell ep with the possessed by death ep okay that those two, those two heat that you know deathgasm they put it as one out you know one you know whatever eight songs or whatever it was and so that kept us on the map. So I got back together with Paul. 
um, and we, you know, worked out our differences because, you know, obviously there was, there were some, there were some issues with unholy ghosts. And he's just like, well, you know, he was basically saying that, you know, it wasn't up to him, you know, to get me kicked out of unholy ghosts. So I was like, well, fuck it. Do the lyrics and vocals for fucking the new, the next, the new diabolic. That's your voice. Anyway. I mean, you, you played on Supreme evil. I said, let's just go in a studio and do it. So we did it. And uh, with RJ uh, playing guitars and Kelly jumped in on the action, you know, Kelly's like, yeah, let's fucking play uh, the, uh, the, the demon fest in California. Um, and, you know, he set up shows. I mean, Kelly was totally down. So I had Kelly, I had Paul and then I had a new guitar player, I had RJ. So that all just, you know, came together um, smooth. I mean, there was, you know, we, we tried to do more. But uh, I think it wasn't too much longer after we actually started picking up traction and Kelly started booking shows. Um, that's when Jeff Paris, you know, he, he died in his sleep. He passed away. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awful, man. Yeah. Um, well, talking about that, you, so he, he, he's on the Blastmasters um, album, right? The, is that right? The Diabolic Blastmasters mm-hmm. that came out? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. So is that um that new release of that with Diabolic on you know as Diabolic, Last Masters Twisted Metal, is right. that is that the same recording or have you like done something different to you know? Nope, the, the exact same recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, I mean, the the way that I did it was just like I had to present it to the label, to and um as diabolic mm. twisted metal okay and so they did they did at that time they didn't feel comfortable using it using the name diabolic they were just like we, we don't want to get involved with you and brian you know we just don't want to get involved it's still too fresh it's you know it's too fresh and so i was like okay well just name it blast masters you know twisted metal fuck it you know what I mean? I was like, we'll just leave, leave it the way we, you know, we'll just leave it like that. I'll, I'm not going to try to ruffle any feathers. And then, um, yeah, not longer after, not, I mean, not, uh, not even a year after that, I was, you know, we we're, were just weren't going to wait around. I mean, the Blastmasters was already done. So mm-hmm. it's like, well, there's nothing to do there. I mean, there's nothing. So I just said, we just kept moving, keep moving forward, you know, get back in the studio and record chaos and hell. And so, that we we released by ourselves and so we didn't have to worry about a record label wanting to mess with it or not you know what i mean i was just like i just put under my fucking bmx records and shit i was like fuck it you know i'll just do it my way and i don't have to enter it if anybody wants to enter me they can just send me to court or whatever send me the court papers and i never got any papers i mean nobody's gonna waste your money trying to it's death metal you're not making millions of fucking um yeah but um yeah i mean i think after um i mean yeah after jeff passed away we just basically had like i just had to take a like you know we it took a break a little bit of a break i mean it was like i still wanted to play but then i found out you know within like six months of that that uh, you know i was gonna be a, i was gonna be a dad yeah yeah you know what I mean? I was like, oh, shit, my life's going to change pretty drastically here in a minute. Um, and we still, you know, so we uh, the last thing I think we did with uh, before Jeff passed away was the Excisions of Exorcism album. Um, that Je- that's Joe Patagno artwork as well. And um, we got, you know, f- we got backing with, you know, Deathgasm Records. They believed in us. Huh. and they they took they they were just like yeah antars you, you know we really like it uh we're gonna you know we want to go ahead and put it out so we I, we paid for the recording and then deathgasm paid for the artwork huh. um so that was i was more than 50 percent. yeah i mean because patagno i mean yeah so that that was a fair that was fair so i mean you know we went ahead and did that, and then Jeff passed away not too long after Excision was was released. We went, uh, we we were just like it was like one one night we were playing a show, and um, <laughs> we were playing a show downtown at the Crowbar, and then uh, the next day, the guys from Cannibal Corpse call us up. They're like, you know, 
uh, we want you to come on tour. 1349 can't make it. And they'll probably make it, but there's some volcano erupting or something like that. So I was like, yeah. So, so Kelly got back. He was on his way to California somewhere for biz for work. He got back on another airplane, flew back to Tampa and got us, you know, got us a van, got us, uh, Cut us everything, you know. You know, we got 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 the truck and everything, and then the next day we're literally on tour with Cannibal Corpse um, again. So that was our second run, but it was only a short run. It wasn't a thirty-five day show, like you know, sh- like the first time we went out with Hate Eternal. That was our first big break, honestly. Uh, when you go out with Cannibal Corpse, it's usually sold out every night. Theaters, clubs, you know, it's maximum capacity. I mean, you know uh you know clubs and you just wind up um you know that that was but this is our this was our second time being out on tour with cannibal um we did like four shows up the east coast uh all the way to new york and um we you know we were done 1349 flew in in new york and then they took over the tour but we still got the tour with cannibal i mean for, for yeah. five nights you know i mean that's huge so we um we got home and then not too long after uh we got home jeff passed away in his sleep um and then just took a little bit we I took a break you know i put out what was it called lucifer induced um the guys at the uh forget what record label it is but we recorded lucifer induced to put that on the city of the dead uh you know as an extra track um and, you know, just, you know, just try to stay in the studio. You know, my, my daughter was born and I just kept it going, just just kept kept moving forward. And Paul and I just wound up just having like, um, you know, uh, we had time to record and write stuff at my apartment before my daughter was born. You know what I mean? Um, so all those songs are what you're hearing from 19 for 2015 all those songs are on the mausoleum of the unholy ghost. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all that came to fruition like later. Um, And I just decided, I said, you know, I'm not getting any younger. And it was a pandemic, you know, it was like 2020, but I was like, I didn't really, you know, I didn't want to wait anymore. So I called Punchy up and he says, all right, come, you know, I saw him at the Morbid Angel show. That was the last time I saw Richard Brunel. And um, so it was like, it was a special show, you know what I mean? Emulation there on tour, Emulation. I hadn't seen those guys in a long time. So I'm like, Punchy, you know, he's there, he's running sound, you know, he's at the sound booth. I saw him back there. I was like, man, I said, I, I, you know, it's been like seven years. It's like, you know, been a long time. I, can, I can't find anybody to uh to to record you know nobody i know you're probably retired you probably he's like nah that's cool just call me next week you know i'm busy you know but i just call me next week and so i called him and he said uh you know we worked it out so i went in and recorded all the drums to a click track then i played um all the guitars to a click track and then uh, he showed me, you know, some, some, some bass lines, you know what I mean? That, so I wound up playing all the bass and then, um, at that time I was just like, I knew, you know, Paul was going to do vocals anyway. He had already had the vocals forever, you know? So I was, wasn't worried, worried about anything like that. I was just like, well, what am I going to do as far as guitar players, you know, who's going to play guitar on this album? And Kelly was just too busy because he was in, I am morbid, you know what I mean? He was, he was doing, you know, he was doing some killer touring at the time. So his time was just way too limited to really give it any, to give it a fair shot. So I was like, all right, well, um, I send the, I send, I send the, send it, send the recording over to Lee. Cause by that time it's, you know, it just needs like some real guitars over it. Not just a scratch guitar. Um, and He's like, uh, he gets me in touch with um, Matt Burns. Okay. Matt Burns is in Monstrosity on Metal Blade Records. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard of the Monstrosity album, which is fucking phenomenal. He's also in uh, Quintessentia. Okay. So, Quintessentia, I mean, we played shows with those guys before. Um, technical, 
amazing guitar players fucking um so uh lee said you know this is who you want to do this out okay go ahead and take care of it you know he'll take care of them and he'll take care of you and so we you know we set up he arranged everything and then we just started going back and forth on these uh you know on on emails and zoom and things like that and just like you know tweaking little parts and so that's where I felt comfortable. I was like, you know, man, he's really, he really was dedicated to helping make the songs better, you know, than what I had already had them, you know, um, making them, you know, so uh, gave, you know, made sure he got 50% of the writing because he helped write them better. You know what I mean? So it was uh, Matt Barnes, me and, uh, and Paul and then the other Matt. Um, and he played uh, another Matt. I met him in uh, Ingvay Malmstein, um, Matt Roberts. Uh, so, you know, it was really cool meeting Matt Roberts because, you know, he's really, he was at the Ingvay Malmstein show. You ever seen the Ingvay Malmstein? It's a pretty ridiculous freaking show. I mean, he's like a ridiculously ridiculous, really good guitar player. And that's, the, that was a cool place to meet a guitar player to be in diabolic because he had heard of our band and stuff. So he fit right in for the, you know, for session guitar player. So that's basically how I did um, the, uh, I played bass on Mausoleum of the Unholy Ghost, right? So I make life easier for Paul. Okay. So he could just focus on vocals. Okay. Yeah. And so that I mean, it was a pandemic. Everybody's wearing a mask. Everybody's, you know, staying away from each other, but it's, you know, it's crazy. So we just got it done and then I released it on uh CD baby mm. once it was recorded. And I, um, but the artwork from, uh, it's really hard to pronounce Z's name. Um, but he had contacted me, I think, um, uh, back in 2014 and he said he wanted to do our album. Um, and, uh, his uh, Zobanzik Balik. Uh, he's, he's done artwork for Ghost. He's done artwork for uh, Body Count, Vader. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and I pulled up this email from him and from 2014. And then now it's 2020. And he's still writing me. And so I'm like, yeah, let's shit. I mean, seen his, his, his portfolio had grown significantly, we can say. Okay. Um, you know, and so I was like, okay. Um, you know, so he sent, sent the album work over and he wanted me to just have like the best record contract. Because Antar, man, I just want you to have the best deal ever. And this and that. I said, listen, I understand, but I can't wait for these guys. I don't know when this pandemic's ever going to be over. Um, and I really need you to believe me right now. I just need the artwork to be done. He's like, okay. So he finally listened to the album. He finished it. Um, and I finished the album and I convinced him. I was like, I, you know, we need the artwork now. You know what I mean? It's just, we can't wait any longer. So got the artwork. He sent me the, you know, big versions, big files over so I could upload them to CD baby. And I paid the money for CD baby. And, and I, I'm, you know, that gives you all the distribution in the world. So what's the plans for Diabolic this year? Like what's, um, when can we see the next sort of physical release from you guys, you know? Okay. So, okay. I've had a lot of different people come in um you know and it's it's just not like you know it's 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 not as cut and dry as like um you know like hey you know come on down learn the song you know come down know all the songs and live in tampa you know or be in tampa a lot so we can really rehearse and get the songs tight mm -hmm. um and if i it, it, it's 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 one of those things where you can't just come down a couple of times a year um, or, you know, and rehearse these songs take more time than that. You know what I mean? And you have to be, have to have the time to do it. And um, right now um, I'm really fortunate that uh, RJ, he uh, reached out and I mean, for years and years and years, he said, you know, I want to put out my own album. I don't want to jam with anybody. I don't want to do anything. I just want to do my own album. And so he reached out and he's just like, you know, man, I really want to, I want, I want to start jamming again, man. I said, you're talking to me. I was like, cause I'd always, you know, 
check in with him and say, you know, because he really does have a piece of re- he knows all the songs perfect. Hmm. And he helped write uh the Chaos and Hell, Possessed by Death album. He did he helped write the Black the Blastmasters albums more him and and Jeff and everything that than me, because I mean I might help with the shot help with a few riffs here and there with some structure, but I mean for the most part. Yeah, RJ and I really, really put a lot of work in that Blastmasters album. So he reached out not too long ago and showed up at the warehouse uh, right down the road where we jam uh, or a jam where my drums are. And I think we we came we jam already like three times, four times, and we already have five new official songs. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't really go back over the old set list and sit around and and you know what I mean? Like go over the old songs because he already knows the songs. So we were able to, we're able to time management is really important, you know, for both of us. So we just said, let's just start off fresh. We already, we already know those old songs. And so it was easy to write these songs. So I think coming up with the, you know, right now we're just coming up with riffs and sending them to, you know, send them to the, through his, to his email. He can listen to them. So the next time we meet, we'll be able to use time management and crunch and talk about songs. So when we get there, um, we're, we're able to, 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 to um, get a lot farther as opposed to just showing up and just showing us our ideas. When we get, we're showing each other ideas via through emails back and forth and tweaking things before uh, we even see each other. So that's going to be really cool. So I think by summer um, RJ wants to shoot for like July. OK, um, to go on and do the, the new album. Um, and so we we did reach out to uh, Jesse Jolly and uh, he seems very interested. Uh, he's um, and, you know, who's the voice of the Blastmasters anyway, which is coming out. Um, and so that's really going to take the the level of, you know. The lyrics as far as the lyrics they're not just, they're not going to be satanic and evil and like just to be satanic and evil. I mean, it, he just has a totally different approach to Paul Olet. Okay. Paul's really, really into that shit, like big time, like serious. And then, you know, that's just the way he's, he's really, he's, you know, he's into a lot of serial kill. He writes serial killers and jail and like, he's got like, you know, he just, he reads a lot of books. He's really into that. You know what I mean? So, Um, that's why he writes the lyrics the way he does, you know, he's just really, really deep into, into the occult and things like that. So, uh, he's able to write lyrics in a different, in a way like that. Now with Jesse, he's just, he's just takes a different approach. Um, and they're still going to be badass lyrics. It's just, we've, we've definitely covered, you know, a lot of that satanic underground cult, you know, lyric, you know, we've already covered a lot of that. So it'll be a really cool to hear uh what jesse does to take it to the next level right um you know he can he's he's gonna be easily to take it to the next level um and then i've reached out to uh you know of course i've known gene for a long time so um you know if he has the time and you know i'd like for gene to play you know leads so as you know as a session guitarist because i know he's in you know he's got his other uh projects he's in like five bands you know what i mean so um i think that that for a solid album um is going to be uh pretty it's going to be really exciting to 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 hear the the finish the finished product of that you know because of the different it's it's a new team um new elements new you know just a new team and um but still the classic it's just still a classic team but still so we've all known each other and worked together so that's it's awesome to say diabolic back man and like was hearing your drums again it's the best man it's such a you got such a unique style man it's it's awesome i love it <laughs> yeah thank you so much man i mean honestly i, I when i when i i remember i remember when i started playing drums you know what i mean it was just like i'd started playing drums like right around the time that um it was like rain and blood okay mm-hmm. so my friend took me to see whiplash power and pain down in dc and then possessed dark angel and i bought a drum set he was a drummer and he said man you know 
uh you know you can you can, you know jam my house you, you know i'll show you some 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 drum stuff and um i was like yeah dude i, was, I didn't think i was ever gonna pull i was just listening to creator he he put he 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 put me on the uh, creator pleasure to kill yeah, yeah and that 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 made me crazy Th- that album i couldn't think about doing anything else in the world other than list other than playing playing death metal there was no way out of it i was like those drums ventor's drums on pleasure to kill mm-hmm. and that motivated me to buy a drum set and then I, of course and then he took me to rain and blood i saw slayer rain and blood and that changes your life forever because it's dave lombardo doing those double bass drums so i just learned a little bit by a little bit my dad taught me how to play my friends you know gave me licks and stuff and i just pieced together drums i never thought i'd ever put out be in a band you know what i mean any any time and i just wind up jamming one day and these these ex mortis got put up a, an ad hmm. at the uh, washington music center and uh in in uh, wheaton maryland and i said I, i'm looking for a guitar player that likes dark angel sodom possessed and slayer hmm. and they had already been tape trading they were older so they were already tape trading with autopsy and death and i i never you know i heard death scream bloody gore hmm. but i you know I, you know they and so that's how we did the ex mortis uh immortalities and it's just like but i just play you know little by little and i just kept practicing and practicing man and um you know i wouldn't i, I wouldn't change anything really yeah that's no, awesome dude sweet well look um hopefully uh at some point you can make it over to australia man it'd be amazing to see you guys play over here that would be awesome i mean I, i'll be honest with you i mean when i bought pete's drum set a long time ago and he gave me an australian uh down under uh you know morbid shirt so i still have that yeah i still have that shirt it's uh their first australian tour yeah of course i want to play down there man it's we just gotta we just gotta get the team on the plane get a promoter to fly us in man you know i mean that's a big country yeah that's what they say it's a really big country so uh, we just need the tour support to get down there yeah not cool man awesome Look, I'm and I'm very much looking forward to hearing uh, what comes next, man. And I'll I'll be uh, ordering these <laughs> reissues and stuff, man. That's wicked. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much, man, Ben, for yeah. uh, reaching out, man. I really wasn't expecting this uh, interview, but um, I'm glad we got to touch base and, and finally meet up. Man. For more metal interviews and metal music videos, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And check out the links below for the audio podcast, new one every Wednesday. Cheers for watching.